Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, Scatman webinar where we're introducing um, app discovery and, and auto patch, a feature that we launched uh, last week or, or two weeks ago. I forget for a second. Um, I'm Wout. I'm one of the co founders here at Scatman. And as you probably have heard, we've been um, acquired by Patch My PC uh, a couple of months ago. So who we are with Patch My PC, uh, just to give a bit of background, uh, Patch My PC was founded in 2011. We have about, about 5,000 enterprise customers. Uh, we are managing 15.6 million devices, so 15.6 million uh, devices are getting updates from us. We have five MVPs that are part of our team, and we're actually at 70 people and growing, um, but there's some more stuff about that next week. And then just to give you a bit of an idea of, of the type of customers we have. So we're really basically across all verticals, across all type of companies and a very, a very global company. Um, just as a bit of background information, there will be a Q&A at the end of this uh, webinar. So at the end of this webinar, I will be answering uh, all of your questions. Now, this is a Teams live even event, which means there is a 30 second delay on whatever I'm saying. So you'll have to use the um, ask a question chat thing. That's a button uh, on the right top next to the leave button. Don't click the leave button. Just click right next to it and there you'll be able to ask questions and we will answer all of those at the end of this session. So what we've done with Autopatch, uh, some of the challenges you are probably experiencing if you're managing apps through Intune is you're wondering which applications you have installed on your devices. Obviously, there's on all of your devices, you will have a lot of apps, but it's always a challenge to find out exactly which apps you have running on your devices. So that's a thing that we try to help you with with Autopatch and, and app discovery as well. And then obviously the big question is, are those apps that you do have running on your devices, are those actually up to date? Uh, and that's where Scatman obviously comes in and we will help you with keeping those apps up to date for you. But the big challenge with that is that it's obviously a moving target. So it's not because you don't have an app installed today or you have a list, a certain list of applications today, that that list will be the same tomorrow because your users will be installing and, and changing that uh, app install landscape. So the challenge is keeping there, keeping track of all of those applications, keeping up to date uh, with all of those apps and making sure that you're not vulnerable for all of the CVEs and all the vulnerabilities that are in those applications. So really getting a better overview in which apps you have running in your environment. And then when you see that you have them running, keeping those uh, applications up to date. So what we've built for that to help you with keeping those apps up to date is really app discovery and auto patch. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate in your Intune tenant. We're going to look at uh, the applications that are discovered by Intune in apps and features on your devices. We'll give you a nice overview of those apps. And then we'll make it very easy for you to patch those applications on your devices if we do discover them on those devices. Just to give you a bit of background on how it actually works, um, as soon as you register now as, as part of Scatman, then we will straight away start um, investigating, start discovering which applications you have running in your environment. Um, and, and once we have those apps discovered, we're going to match the name that those apps have in apps and features with the name that we currently have configured in Scatman. So for most of our applications, we are tracking the name that they have in apps and features. We will match up those names and once they do match up, we'll uh, give you an overview of which applications we have discovered in your environment. And then we'll give you a bit of an overview whether they're managed or not. I'll, I'll demo all of that in, in a few minutes as well. And then you can opt to enable auto patch. Uh, what Scatman auto patch is going to do is it's going to when we discover an application, we will automatically start patching that app. So say you are um, not using Google Chrome today. Obviously, you probably are, but imagine that you're not for whatever reason. And we discover that you do have a new application in your environment, Google Chrome. Then we will automatically start patching that application for you without you having to do anything. We'll completely automate the patching cycle of that application. 
how that actually works is in your tenant, we will publish an update only app. That update only app is going to run on all of your devices or all of your users and is going to check if Chrome is installed. If it is installed, we'll update it. If it's not installed, we're going to skip the update. So we're actually using the update only mechanism that we have for all of our applications to make sure that we're going to update that application on your device if we discover it. And we're reevaluating that every th three days. So every three days we're running through that cycle again. And we're going to make sure that if we do discover a new application that we are going to start patching it. So every three days we're going to discover the apps in your tenant and start patching them if we have to. That's it for uh, the PowerPoint. I've got uh, a bit of a demo now, and then there's a couple of more slides to give you a bit of insights into what the future features are that we're working on there. Um, so let me just get out my demo tenant here, where I've already got it at the discovery page. So as you can see here, these are the applications that we have running on some of our devices. We can really get an overview here of how many devices actually have that application running as it's a demo tenant. Obviously, I've got only uh, two, three devices in there, so it's reporting three devices here. And then we're going to give you an overview of the applications that are already managed, uh, that are not managed. So these applications we have discovered in your environment, but you're not patching them yet. As soon as you start patching them with Scapman, you'll see those apps pop up in the Manage tab. We'll let you know if they're managed on all devices or not, and we'll really give you an overview of all of those device, all of those apps in your tenant. Then when we go back to unmanaged, it's very easy. You can just click a button here and then we'll start patching that application for you. So you can just create an update only assignments, assign it to all devices. And then when you deploy that app, we will from that moment on start managing that application, start patching that application on all of your devices, but only if it's already installed on that device. So if the app isn't yet isn't installed yet on your device, we won't touch it. Once we find a Docker desktop in this example on your device, we will automatically start patching it for all of your devices in this scenario. So that's pretty cool. That makes it very easy for you to just see which apps you've got running in your environment and which ones you want to patch, especially during onboarding when you're onboarding a new uh, tenant or a new customer and you want to see which apps you should start patching. This is very useful because instead of having to figure out yourself which apps they have running, you can just go to this overview here and start patching those applications with a couple of clicks. Now, Obviously, this is a one-off thing, um, or, or we, instead of you having to do this manually, we have created a Scatman auto patch for you. With that, we can actually automate that complete process for you. So by default, auto patch is not enabled. Uh, when you do enable it, there's a small wizard for it where you can configure uh, the settings for auto patch. So first of all, you can select the language in which we should install those uh, apps that we are going to start auto patching, and then the threshold of the number of minimum minimum number of installs. So by default, that, that's actually five. I've configured this to two in this tenant because I don't have enough devices. Um, but we do suggest that you only enable auto patch from a certain number of devices because obviously it's going to start deploying out a lot of applications in your tenant because you probably in a real life uh, environment have a lot of apps in there, but that are just used by by a couple of devices. So only when it's a real significant number of your estate that has those applications installed, we suggest that you start auto patching them. So I've got that configured to two here. Then you can choose whether we should assign that applications to all that application that update only app to all users or all devices. Uh, obviously, that's going to be the assignment type that you have in Intune. So it's going to be the update only app is going to be required for all users or all devices in your environment. And then uh, it'll start getting patched only if that app is installed on their device. On the next page, we're going to give you an overview of uh, which apps we're going to start auto patching. Uh, if you just enable it, uh, what we suggest is that you uh, are a bit careful about which apps you do want to patch. So don't just enable it straight away for all of your applications, because obviously that might cause uh, some, some impact in your environment. If your users need a specific version of Citrix Workspace, for example, or a specific version of Docker Desktop, 
you don't just want to start patching that in a big environment. Uh, you want to be a bit careful about just enabling it so you can create exclusions here. And with those exclusions, we will uh, not include those applications in auto patch and not start automatically patching them for you. Obviously, you can remove those exclusions later should you want to to re include those applications in auto patch and they will still show up on the discovery uh, page so you can still patch those apps manually if you want to. Then once you enable auto patch, it's going to take uh, up to 60 minutes before the, the installs are actually created. So this is a scheduled app that gets scheduled every couple of hours and uh, we're going to, it can take up to 60 minutes before those installs are actually created in your tenant. But after 60 minutes, you should see those apps pop up here and you can start uh, patching them. Now, if you exclude an app and you want to make a comment about why you're excluding an app, for example, uh, then you can fill that out here. And then we will, then that's an easy way for you to keep track of why you've actually excluded those applications so that other people know as well and not just you and you don't forget why it was that you excluded a specific app in here. When we do discover a new application, we'll also send you an email of which apps uh, we've patched for you. So which apps we've automatically started patching for you. You'll get an overview of that every time when uh, the app discovery runs, when the auto patch is and is uh, has created those applications. You'll get an email stating which apps we've started patching for you and maybe which apps have failed as well. So there might be a couple of reasons uh, why why apps fail. The main reason is because the language you have configured in the configuration, in this case, multi-language, is not available uh, for that specific application. So if that specific language is not available, um, we all Apache will not be able to actually create that install. That's a functionality we're working on right now. That's uh, I'll talk about that a bit more during the roadmap, roadmap but we'll talk. Uh, we're working on fixing that issue so that we have less failures and more chances of, of being able to automatically patch an application for you. That's it for the, the live demo right here. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A as there's a 30 second delay uh for this webinar and i'm very quickly gonna go gonna switch back to the powerpoint where we've listed the roadmap features that we're working on um so we've tested it out with with quite a few customers already um based on their feedback we're uh gonna improve this a bit there's a few additional things we're gonna work on the first one is we're gonna uh, allow you to configure a delay before we actually create the auto patch app so say that we discover again google chrome today instead of just creating it straight away we're gonna give you a couple of days notice uh, before we actually create that deployment of that application we'll send you an email saying hey we're going to create an update for chrome in five days or at, at this specific date uh, obviously that delay is, is configurable the notification email will just be sent out to the notification email address that you have configured already um, so you will be able to define some delay in there and some notification flow to make sure that we don't just start patching uh, an app without straight away start patching app uh, and you get got the chance to exclude it should you want to before we actually hit that timer then the second thing we're working on uh, i touched on that briefly or briefly already so we're gonna provide the option to provide a secondary language so say that we are not able to find multi-language for example like i just showed then you can define a secondary language which we'll use for the applications um, so if we're not able to find multi-language in our Google Chrome example, then we'll just fall back to English if that's the second language that we have configured to make sure that we're able to auto patch way more applications than we are today. The third one is update rings. Um, so today we don't support update rings for auto patch, which means that if you uh, deploy an auto patch app, we will just uh, create one single release ring for it. When there is an update for that ring, we'll update it straight away. Um, just like any of our other applications, we will also add update rings support for auto patch. So you can just define the assignments, the groups, um, and uh, the delays for each of those rings in the UI there as well. Um, there's some more stuff coming where you can just define those defaults there as well um, in the auto patch UI. So that way you can automatically integrate update rings into that uh, auto patch UI. 
The fourth one is automatic exclusions. So there's situations in which you might have duplicates in the apps and features name, uh, which causes uh, applications to be patched multiple times or discovered by auto patch multiple times. We're going to um, automatically make suggestions on which apps should be excluded. So we'll automatically exclude certain apps. Obviously, you can overwrite those defaults should you want to, but from our end, we will, uh, based on the experience we have so far, automatically and make suggestions on which apps you should exclude from auto patch so that we don't start double patching certain applications. And then the next one uh, is the unsupported tab. Um, so we currently only track applications that we have available in the Scapman portal itself. So only if we have certain apps in our app store, we will show them in the UI. What we are adding is that um, we will also report on applications we have discovered in your environment, but that we don't have in our portal yet. So you'll be able to see which apps we found, but uh, we don't have available in Scatman today. And the next one is licensing. Um, so what we what we're adding as well is that based on the number of discovered applications you have in the portal, you can define how many licenses you have available for the application and a certain threshold at which you will be notified and alerted if you pass that threshold to make sure that that application um, is not over committing its licenses, for example. So in case you want to track how many people are using AutoCAD, for example, or how many people have it installed. Um, you can use that to be notified if you're passing that license threshold. Um, that's it for my uh, presentation and my demo so far. Any questions or ideas that you have, please feel free to share them. Uh, Maarten is going to go over some of the questions you have asked so far, um, and I will try to answer, answer them as best as I can. <clears throat> yes, uh, one of the questions was, uh, what does it look like uh, to transi transition Google Chrome from an installation to auto patch? So if it's already, um, if you already have an installation, then it will actually be shown, and I'm looking for my mouse here for, for a second, there we go. So then it'll actually be shown under the managed apps. So if you've already got Google Chrome, then it will just show here and it will also give you the information and I clicked it, that's not what I should have done. Um, it will also tell you if it's already assigned to all users or not, and I'm probably on the wrong page let me let me use the search feature that's going to work way better there we go and it's already going to tell you if it's assigned to all users or all devices or not if it's not there'll be a red cross here to tell you hey you've got it deployed but you don't have it assigned to all users or all devices which obviously means that we can't be 100 sure that you're actually keeping it up to date for all of your users or all of your devices and then when you click it then we're going to go to the last known google chrome install that you have in your environment which here is specifically this one Okay. Uh, another question was, can we also remove the apps if a new app is uh, found by uh, discovery? So if we discover a new application um, and we're going to automatically start auto patching it, you can, if it's a new application, um, add it to the exclude list. Sorry, I should have clicked here. So this is an overview of all of the apps that we've got discovered uh, that we have in our platform. Actually, you can search for it and then you can add the exclusion for that application and we won't uh, add it anymore. Then if we have already created an installation for it, you can just go to the installations page and just remove that installation there. Obviously, this is not the right app, but imagine for a second, and it's it happens to be one that's managed by a partner. Um, let me see if I can find a better one for a second. You can just delete it with the regular way of deleting it. So we will automatically create the installation for it, but you will have full control over it. You can delete it afterwards. Now, obviously, if you delete it and you haven't excluded it from auto patch, we will recreate the installation for it. So imagine that I'm deleting this one, but I'm tomorrow discovering it again in auto patch. We will recreate the installation for the application with the update only assignment. Mm -hmm. But I also think they're referring to remove it from the clients. If it's the oh, remove it from the clients. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. Um, that's a good one. Uh, actually, that should have been on the roadmap because we talked about that already. Um, so we are thinking about uh, providing the option to automatically uh, to create an exclude list, let's say, where on auto patch you can define if you find this or that application, then we will automatically um, start uninstalling the application from those devices. 
That was a week for the question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Um, uh, what happens if an application uh, is discovered which isn't available in Scapman? So I think we're yeah. referring to the yeah. Team. So that's that's unmanaged thing. So we'll uh, today we're not showing it. Um, if in the future once we add yeah, the, unsupport, the, unsupported. the unsupported tab, then we'll uh, we'll show it there, and and you'll be able to see which apps uh, we've discovered, um, but that we don't have available in our catalog. Okay. Another question: Are you able to discover uh, and patch apps on macOS? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, no, we are not. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna just keep it as plain and simple as I can. No, we are not. Uh, we don't have macOS available in in our App Store today. Okay. Just I gotta at least give it like one minute before we close because there might be a delay. So. I'm just going to go very quickly back to the unsupported apps. The reason why we're uh, not showing those apps today is because Intune is reporting on, on all of the apps you have on your device, including we know store apps. So it's really you discover thousands and thousands of applications in, in a lot of scenarios. Um, and what we want to do, obviously, is create an overview for you that's actually useful. So we are going to create a list of apps we don't want to show on that UI before we actually add it back in. We used to have it before, uh, but we removed it again because it's just um, too many applications that we're showing there in, in that overview, which kind of defeats the purpose. Another question here. Can you make a difference between user-based apps and system apps? Can auto patch detect both, for example, VS Code? Uh, we are going to, we are actually looking in Intune. We're looking in Graph API to see which apps Intune is reporting on. So whatever Intune is reporting on, we will discover and we will uh, start auto patching as well. Um, with our applications, if you deploy a, uh, let's use VS Code indeed as an example, or let, no, let's use Chrome for, as an example. If you, Chrome, you can install in user context as well. If you use one of our installations, then we will actually remove the user-based installed Chrome and replace it with a system-based Chrome, for example, as well. Um, so any application that is discovered by Intune, we will be able to auto patch uh, in here, obviously, if we have that, that application in our app store. And then another question, can we easily see the devices on which an app was discovered? Uh, no, we cannot. That was actually something that, that is on the roadmap list as well, but then we forgot to add in the PowerPoint. Indeed, yeah. the idea uh, is that you are able to just easily click that application and get an overview of all of the devices that have that uh, application installed. Not today, but um, if all goes well, in the future, you will be able to do so. Okay, let me check the chat. There are some other questions, but they're mainly specific to certain customers. Okay. Um, I think we covered most of the okay, cool. questions. So, um, if you do have a question we haven't covered yet, please just copy paste it to us so to make sure that we've covered all of your questions. I'll give you another minute. If it's a uh, question specific to specific customers, we'll we'll take those offline and answer those uh, offline. All right, um, I think the 30 seconds have about passed. I'm just going to talk very slowly to make sure that they have. Oh, that wasn't very slow. 
<laughs> no, and otherwise, if you still uh, have uh, any questions, um, put them in the Q&A and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Yes, and uh, let us know uh, if there's anything else we can do for you. Here's our contact details. Free, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and yeah, let us know what you think of of, uh, of Auto Patch. Um, if you have any more ideas, feel please feel free to share those as well. We've got a um, user voice, we've got uh, email, we've got me, so there's even phone apparently. So just feel free to let us know uh, and we'll be more than happy to consider all of your ideas uh, and to brainstorm about them. That's really what we try to do. We try to implement your ideas. So this is not something that we invented ourselves. This is ideas that we got from you guys. So please do let us know if you have any more ideas, more than happy to implement those. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.